Hi everybody, my name is Harry Jacobs and welcome to North of 60 Gaming. Today we're going to take a look at Darwin's Journey. That's a new Kickstarter. I just reviewed it the other day on Kickstarter, so look for North of 60 Gaming. And I reviewed a little bit of the Kickstarter, deciding whether or not you should uh, back it or not. I backed it. I liked the game. And today we're going to take a quick look at the game on Tabletop Simulator, as I don't have a prototype in front of me. So hang on, I'm going to take us down to uh, Tabletop Simulator in just a second. So first up guys, I just want to tell you this is a most fabulous implementation of this game. It's one of the best scripting efforts I have seen on Tabletop Simulator. You can see how they've made it very easy. Just press which mode you want to play in, including the new solitaire mode, which just got put up in the last day. So let's show you how quickly it sets up. We're going to just go for a quick four-player game, and we'll just press the button. As you can see, uh, Tabletop Simulator handles it all, puts out all the random different counters and tokens, scoring, etc. Once this is complete, what we're going to do is I'm going to take a few minutes, I'm just going to drop out, Put it on pause, set up the um, companions and the goals real quickly. So the companions, as you can see, are right here. So normally the companions, each player would get dealt four. Then we would do a drafting of which I would take one, pass it, the next player would give it to me, and then we'd take another one. Eventually we'd have four, and then we would keep three out of those four and the companions come into play later on with the bonuses, which I'll explain when we get into the game in a moment. So here we're going to go over to a player board to start. We have three uh, companions that we can bring into play at some point when we fulfill the seals. The seals is one of the primary mechanics in this game and you have to get seals. The seals will be placed on this board here from left to right and we'll show that mechanic in just a moment. We start out with four workers that we can place on the board, six lenses and lenses are what we use to open areas that aren't open to us and that is an action that will take place on the board. We start off with a temporary seal and four gold coins as well as two bonus actions. There is a lot of iconology here. Uh, here you can see that we have two blue seals and a camping. That says to, that we must have uh, a campground, and you can see it up here, one camp in the area and two blue seals on one of our meeples. This one is we have to have a researched, have researched a animal, and you can see the animals right here with the little paw, and one of our stamp, and we've, un, we've taken away all the stamps in our stamp area and then we can move that onto the board. Once we place this, we can once we once we fulfill the action, we can place it on the board. And then take the bonus and then end game scoring. So the infinity means that it happens all the time. In this case, whenever we place a worker in a journal that already has another player, instead of playing the normal two gold to go there, we can play one less, which is one gold. Looking at the board, we'll just take a higher, little bit of a higher view. You can see these are what's considered journals. In a four-player game, the main journals are divided up into two journals. So therefore, when you go into one of these journal spots, you will, with another meeple, you will play two gold or one gold. These spots are not opened yet. These are where you place your personal lenses, and that's an action that is driven down here and it will tell you on the board that you have to have four or five. We can deliver species to the museum for money. We can do research. We can move along on the evolutionary research track, which is really about end game scoring. Here is our correspondence area. Correspondence area means when you have stamps there, you only take the bonus action if you're in the first place or second place. So the more stamps, the more bonus. And we'll explain that uh, probably within the first turn somewhere. And here's your scoring track. Down here we can see the islands and there are three islands in the Galapagos chain, each that have been seeded with various 
animals of which that we can gather and research. We can camp, we can take actions, like here if we land here, we will get a purple temporary token. You can see we have ships, each player has his own ship. This is the HMS Beagle, this is our turn marker, so every turn he will move up one spot. And it's important to note that we must keep up with the Beagle or suffer a lag penalty. And down here is the scoring. So this says that for every red seal we have, we are going to get four bonus points at the end. If we lag, if we are not up to the Beagle or past the Beagle, we are going to take a penalty of minus one score for this condition. I really like the game in game idea here. Here we deliver to the museum and we're going to show that mechanic maybe in the first within the first turn. That is the fundamental way of making a lot of money. So we're going to start off with the yellow player. Generally we're going to want to take a seal action but what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to spend all my money and I'm going to take a non sealed guy and I'm going to put him here. This is the upgrade token. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be a pretty stat move right off the bat, so we're going to pay that money. We're going to come here, take one of our lenses. We're going to go up to here and we're going to place it here. Now, normally you would have to place a resource meeple here, but because we've bought this upgrade, we can actually do this. So this, this says that we can have a minus one to take a seal and take a seal from the zero level. So if we look at our guy, go back here. We know we need two blue seals. And here's the blue seals, which is sailing action. So I probably at the first turn is going to, I'm going to try to do those two seals. So I'm going to take one from the zero and, and one from here, and I'm going to move them over to here. And I'm going to take them here, and we're going to put them on our board. And you can see we filled that up. That is as easy as the first turn gets. Now, of course, we have no money now, but we'll see what happens. But having those seals are super important. Blue is going to do the same thing, actually. Blue is going to go here, though. S since he is the first person here, he does not pay a pe penalty. We'll check. He needs purple and green. He is There is no green at this point, so really, he might just consider either... He might go, he'll go with a red red seal and he's going to place it here. You can see uh, we're going to need a number of seals for red seals here, at least one red seal for his companions here. So it's a good thing that he's collecting that. That is as simple as this turn goes. As you can see now, we start to restrict the boards. Now, another guy can take his purple here, but he'd have to pay two to go there, and he'd have to have two red seals here, so he can't really go there at this point. So let's take uh, a purple seal and we're going to go over here and we'll just show you this real quick. He is going to take, go adventuring. He can go up two spaces. He's going to take his meeple and go one, two, and you can see he is actually going to observe our snail. We are going to take this marker. We are going to find our snail here and we're going to place our right there. He has now got a, a specimen to take back to the museum. Just to show you a slightly different way of doing things, I think we're going to take our green purple guy, yes, and we're going to put him here. Now he is going to have to pay the two gold penalty for a red seal, and he's going to take a yellow seal. Mainly because I want to show you uh, the stamp, all the actions as we go along here. You can see how quick the turns can be here. So, really, while other people are playing, you should be thinking about, hmm, what am I doing here? Now, we know we have a blue seal here. Actually, the blue seals, if I were smart, let's pretend that we've actually, we don't need that one, played with this guy, because this would allow us to do this. To go here. Now, this allows me to move the beagle, my ship, the yellow ship, two spaces. One, two. Now you can see again that I have now been able to observe a bird. And we take a marker, 
go down to our board and find it there. There he is, and we drop it here. This is important because these go to the museum later on. Museums do not require seals, nor do you have to pay the penalty of gold. Blue still has his, uh, he has a red action, but I think if he still has his gold, he's going to go here and he's going to take this other journal entry. He's going to spend all four of his gold. And then this is a, a way of making money. He is going to take one of his lenses. He's going to go, he's going to go here into the adventuring because he thinks that a lot of people are going to adventure and he wants to be able to, to take advantage of people who want to move three spaces when they get two seals. Yellow is looking for yellow seals, which there are none. He's looking for eight victory points and a feather. So it might be behoove him to find a bird, but he doesn't have to really worry about that right this moment. He doesn't have any seal, so he really can't. so his best move at this point is he's going to go deliver something to the museum. So he has, as you said, that blue snail. So we're going to come down here. We're going to take it, put our blue snail here. Now the way this works is, first of all, for delivering the first thing to the museum, he gets to take the coin. Then he can take the bonuses for each of the row in the column. In this case, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So he will take six coins. You can see how quickly the, the first guy that gets to do this gets uh, a significant uh, boost in his gold or coins. Now, if it's covered up, what happens is you would get this action. Now, because you played it down, he does not get the evolution track, which is down here. But next time he comes here, he would get that bonus. When this, fill, when this is full, the first person there will get that bonus as well. So that is the blue player. Now the white player, oh that was the white player, let's go over to the green player right now. He has a yellow, so he comes over to here. That allows him to put two stamps down. He'd like to grab some seals and, a, and there's a minus two, so he's going to take two stamps. Now you can take two stamps or one stamp from two columns, however the two stamps do have to go on the same um, stamp or correspondence. So he's going to do that and that. And then we're back around. You can see how quickly these turns are. Now I have a purple stamp, so I can pr go pretty well anywhere. I don't need two more blue. So, and I don't have something that can go here. I could research, that's kind of a waste. So what I'm going to do as a gold player, so I have no money, so I cannot go to the blue spot with this guy. So what I'm going to do is take this per, this guy here, and I'm going to go here. Now this kind of assures me that I'm going to stay in first place, but the bonus is that, as you can see, I'm going to get two gold. And there's one, because he's out of gold to begin with. Blue has one red seal left. It has no gold. There's not a lot he can do here other than the, this is one of the things I, I don't like about this game is that you can get, re, in a, especially in a four player game, you can get really squeezed out of if you don't have a seal. I have one red seal but no money. So I can't go there. I do have a temporary seal but I'd still have to pay two to go here. So he, if he wants a couple of gold for his last guy, he could go up here. Not an optimal move, but he gets his two. He gets two gold. Now White's come along. He's already been to the museum. He doesn't have any any seals left. So again, he's pressed to do something. Now he has two a a purple seal here and he's got plenty of cash. So I would say in his case he's going to go here. He doesn't have two seals but he can go here, spend the two, and he can take a seal of his choosing. I think he could go down here and take a red. He can afford two and he took this temporary one out to get there takes that red, he can, he's going to have to pay two to get that seal. 
but he's got plenty of cash. That was kind of tough. Again, so you can see how fast these optimal moves kind of disappear. Green has two gold. He's in third place. He says, okay, I don't mind being in third place. So I'm going to come here. Take the two gold. And be happy with that. Next up is White, last turn. Now he still has two blue seals. And he's got his cash. So I, normally what I would do is then we'd go up here. He'd spend his two. You, you can see how quickly money is, is just a, a brutal. Actually, he's got money. So actually what he's going to do, yeah, because he has a blue seal. He pays, he's going to have to pay us two. Whoops. We'll get three. One, two, three. And he's going to move his beagle two spots as well. Since this has already been researched, he's just going to get ahead of the beagle. And he's good. That's his last turn. The blue has a red seal. He's got two. It would cost him two to grab a, a blue seal. Does he need a blue seals? He can. This, he does not. Ha he has a purple. But he's got that red seal here. I think he would go here. Again. He doesn't to take a red seal this time. Again, not, not, and in fact, I don't think he would do that. In fact, blue's going to come over here to the stamps. He is going to still spend the two, because he has to. He's got to spend the purple to go there. And then he's going to do the same thing, and he's going to take two off of this pile. And because he wants to be cash, he's going to move his sail ship as well at this point. White doesn't have two reds, he doesn't have a... so he's pretty much stuck going here. But again, he's got lots of cash, so he's not too bad off. He still has to spend his two. Remember, in this bigger eyeglass, or magnifying glass, they can have as many meeples as you'd like. At this point, there's really only blue and red, so he might as well take the freebie, and he'll put it here for now. And then the green has his last. He's got a couple of gold. He's got a yellow. He could go there. He's got his... Uh, I think, though, he, he would like to spend his blue. So he's going to use that. So he, too, can move up uh, on the track. So that is how the game plays. We didn't see every action here. Now, at the end of the round, what's going to happen is first we're going to come over to the turn tracker. And you can see we're going to switch things around. The green's going to go here. Everything else remains the same. Then we're going to come down and we are going to look at things like the score tracker. So let's just see where the beagle is. The beagle is here. So for everybody who has a red seal, they are going to gain four points. Now, the green, if the green has a red seal, he is only going to gain three. He does not have a red seal. doesn't hurt him at all. White has no red seals. Blue has four, so he's going to get four points. And as does white. Then we're going to come over here and look at our stamps. You can see green now can grab some stamps. So he can go minus two and a freebie, which is, there are no freebies, so he would have to pay as per normal, which he does have some coins. So he's going to come across and he's going to grab a red one because he's, because he's a, uh, a minus two, he's going to grab a blue. And, see, and you can see here, he actually does this. He's going to need two blue here. So he's going to go here and he's going to pay one to get that extra one. And he's going to put it here, and he's going to pay the extra gold for that. Now, in this case, he's going to remove one stamp. You always divide it in half, rounding up, and then moving the stamps into this discard area. 
the blue gets to will do the same thing, and except he gets to move his ship twice. So he's going to go one, two. So he's quite along on the track now. So he's looking to execute some strategy in terms of moving past the beagle. Of course, then the beagle moves up to the next spot. Once the beagle gets to the next spot, each player ship passes the ribbon. They will put a meeple here and they will continue through the game. So lastly, once we've uh, assigned those points and we've moved our beagles and we've, we then will take our bonus actions here, with nobody took an extra bonus action, we will recycle them out, put two new silvers, two new golds, and then what we're going to do is we'll go up to our seals and we're going to just move up all those seals. And then we're going to go into our little bag here and then we'll start doing more seals. Hopefully they'll see some other colors besides red and blue. Well, it doesn't look like it. There we go. Once that's all done, people will take back their meeples to their boards and, and then to continue playing until the end of the five rounds. So we don't see every action here, but I think the problem I see with this main game, and I back this, but but I think it's going to be a good game, and multiple plays will bear out, that there's going to be a lot of first-term sameness. So in other words, we're going to see this actions here. Some guy's going to do this first, some guy's going to do this first, and then the next two players after that are going to struggle because the seals now are going to be expensive and the gold's going to get short. The first guy, of course, as you saw here, is going to take a great advantage of, of, of getting some cash. And so resources are going to get harder and harder to get through the game. And you're going to have to get to the bonus actions. You're going to have to get to the these actions as well as have enough seals. And I did find through playthroughs that getting these seals are very, very tough if you don't have the right, right amount of money and the right seals to trigger going to that which means you're going to have to travel if you want temporary through through the here to get the purple temps but then you have to concentrate on green so this is really going to be a really big balancing act here so that's a kind of a one turn playthrough i hope you enjoyed it this is available on tts tabletop simulator uh, it's quick to set up i recommend tabletop simulator it runs what twenty dollars give or take uh, and has many, many games that you can try. You don't have to buy. In this case, I like it. Even if I bought the physical game, I tend to still play on this, especially like a couple weeks ago, I did a run-through of the solo dwellings. Why? Because it's far easier to do it on t Tabletop Simulator than it is for me to spend the time sending, setting it up and setting up the video, and it's lazy, I know, but hey, that's just me. Anyway, Thanks very much. If you like what you saw, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments, please let me know. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, I would appreciate, maybe if you would like to subscribe, that'd be wonderful. I have a long way to go here for subscriptions, but every single like and every simple subscription helps.